I, well, I won't introduce myself because you all know me and you all now have seen that the talk is changing the changes process. So I have some boilerplate I, I have to start out with, so let's talk about it. If you want to say nice things, you can, there's my Twitter handle. If you want to say not nice things, you can send them to Dev Null. If you have like actual constructive things to talk about, um, nobody ever shows up to this, but I do hold weekly office hours in IRC. You, you do sometimes. I didn't know about this. So. Yeah. Well, it's because you don't read my community blog post, apparently. I do read those, but I skip over the part where it talks about the office hours. No, okay. Well, <laughs> now you know. <laughs> every, every word I write is golden. You should read, like. I will remember to do that. All right, so what we're going to talk about in the next 24 minutes is. Um, a little bit of background about why we have a changes process, what the process is, just kind of as a reminder, you know, most of you are fairly familiar with it, but I feel like it's always good to kind of nudge people, and this way I'm not calling out anyone specifically. Um, then we're we'll gonna talk about why we're changing, what we're changing, and then, oh no, what if it's terrible, and what do we do beyond that? So why have a changes process? If you were at my change, uh, change management and open source projects talk at DevConf. The next few minutes will seem very familiar, but I condensed the 50 minutes down to much smaller than that. Um, so I'm not gonna get into like the more broader theory, but basically let's start out with what a change is. We're talking here about technical changes to features or processes, things that we ship to our users or ways in, that we build the things that we ship. So why do we have a process for this? It's not just to keep me employed, although I do really appreciate getting paid. Um, it's communication. And these are all v different variations of me saying the word communication, but it looks better to have multiple bullets on the, <laughs> on the slide. So what does it mean by communication? Well, we want to communicate with each other. For, there's a large group of people who contribute to Fedora in some way, and it's really hard to keep up with everything that goes on. Um, if you subscribe to a lot of the mailing lists, you mostly are really good at just marking emails as read or just dealing with the fact that you have a thousand unread messages. It's good to get feedback. Sometimes people propose changes that are really bad. Um, I'd like to point out that Matthew po submitted a, a change to basically get some very raw and anonymous numbers from DNF and everyone's like, actually that's kind of shady. And what happened? They came up with a better idea. Um, we had recently the. It was fine. Just I, I'm not here to pass judgment. I'm just reflecting the values of the community back to you. Um, so you know, and sometimes it's, yeah, this is a great idea, but this is going to affect me in this way, and I need time to do this. So can we put it off, or can we do this thing? You know, there's a lot of coordination that happens. And then more communication, right? So like not just as, as we're implementing the change and shipping it, but it'd be good to tell people about what we've done. One, because it's nice to get you know, coverage of our work and so people recognize it and they like, oh yeah, Fedora, I should you know, go install the new release because it's got all this cool stuff. And getting that into the release notes is part of the changes process. Um, everything we ever say is immediately turned into a Pharonix article. So, you know, never come up with any bad ideas on a mailing list because everyone will assume that's what we're doing. The process. Um, a very wise person said developers don't actually hate process. Just when they, when it works, they call it culture. And, you know, part of the reason people think they hate process is sometimes the process isn't scaled to the thing. So I use this you know, as an example, it's so like in Fedora, we have a relatively heavy process because it's a really big dynamic community with lots of moving parts, people who are doing stuff because Red Hat pays them to, people who work at Red Hat and are doing stuff because they want to, people who are just doing stuff because they like being in the Fedora community and they don't have any real association with Red Hat. On the other hand, there's a Perl Twitter client that I maintain where I'm the only maintainer and there's still some users, but people have mostly moved on to other tools at this point. So really the change process is Ben sits down, decides he wants to code something, he pushes it, and maybe he calls it a release at some point. Um, not a lot of communication goes on. I actually don't spend a lot of time talking to myself. <laughs> so what is Fedora's process? Well, back in the old days, uh, prior to Fedora 20, we had the features process. 
And the main question of the features process is, is this a feature or an enhancement? And people had to make that judgment call. And it turns out it wasn't a great process. Um, when I was doing some research on this to you know, sort of see what was going on, I found this comment on a, a blog post from somebody in the community replying to somebody else in the community. And basically the gist of it, because I'm not going to sit here and make you try and squint at it, the gist is, why should we do this? Because all it does is make work. Um, and that was really true because how we tracked the, the progress of changes was you went in, if you were the change owner, and you edited the wiki page and said, I am X percent done now. And you were supposed to do that you know, fairly often. And you know, people kind of just went with 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 when they remembered to do it, which was almost never. <laughs> and it wasn't really meaningful because 80, being 80 percent done means you've barely started, right? So it wasn't really that helpful. Um, so people started complaining, people started being unhappy, so the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, they identified a few issues that didn't work about the features process. Uh, feature is very ambiguous. People thought it should be a feature, but it's actually an enhancement. Some people thought it was an enhancement, it really is a feature, and some people didn't think it was either, but it really should have been one or the other, and like it's, nobody really knew what it meant. There were a lot of different wiki pages that all asked for the same information, which was a real pain. Um, it didn't account for different types or scopes of features. So if you wanted to add a new desktop environment, that was the same as you know if you said, let's replace the Linux kernel with BSD. They used the same process, even though they are very much not the same scope. And the process really didn't make the the feature proposals visible to, that visible to the community until after they were approved. Like after Fesco said, yep, this is good. Then it was like, oh, yeah, hey, we're going to do this thing now. Um, and Fesco is pretty great. Shout out to all the Fesco members in the room. Uh, but there's only nine of them, and they can only identify so many problems. Um, and having the community interaction early in the process is really good for identifying some problems before they get implemented. So my predecessor's predecessor helped design a new progress, uh, process that we started using in Fedora 20. And it's really similar to the features process, but it's better. Um, it's probably 80, 70, 80 percent the same. But now we don't think about feature or enhancement because those are not really helpful. So we distinguish between system-wide and self-contained changes. And let's be honest, we have trouble making those distinctions sometimes too. But it's a little more clear. Does somebody else have to do work because of you? All right, it's probably a system-wide change. Is the work contained to you or the group you're working with to propose the change? All right, it's probably self-contained. It's there's we still have the the rough edges, but it makes a little more sense now. And changes aren't necessarily shipped code. Most of the changes are. Some things are like, oh, we're gonna change we're gonna change what's included in the default build route. The end user is never going to actually care about that because if the package builds, the package builds. But community contributors, that's important because all of a sudden, oh crap, I have to update my spec file so my packages still build. So the, the process is fairly similar for self-contained and system-wide changes, but system-wide changes, because they're a little bigger, we ask a little more of the, the owners for that. We have, they have to have contingency plans test plans, they have to say what the impact on the other developers is, what the impact on upgrades is, so if you go from Fedora 30 to Fedora 31 and this change is imp implemented, will you accidentally wipe the user's hard drive? That's, if, if that's listed in a change proposal, I get, I'm guessing it will probably be rejected, but it's good to identify these things, right? And so the way the flow kind of works is the change owner drafts a proposal in a wiki page. They check with release engineering if they have to. Um, we have some, we've made fewer people that have to do that because I was tired of having Mohan have to go in and be like, yep, it's fine, yep, it's fine, yep, it's fine. Like it's a waste of his time. Um, if there's a trademark approval needed because they're making a new spin or doing something, they have to go to the council and the council has the, the, author has the authority to be like, yes, this is a good use of our trademark. And then if there's some policy changes like around packaging, the packaging committee is the gatekeeper for that. And then they go and mark the page 
the wiki page ready by setting it to a category and hoping they don't mistype the category because then it gets lost. And so then I go in every so often and you know I refresh the pages list of pages in that category and I say, oh good, there's some new ones. So I change Wrangler posts to change proposal really simplifies that I have to go through like grab the source, copy into an email, delete all the markup and the comments and make sure the link is there and the, make sure I typed the, the version number right in the subject and I copy and pasted the, the title right. And if you've seen the change proposals I've sent out in the last year, there's like a one in 20 chance that something is wrong. I've put the, I've, I've said system wide when I meant you know, self-contained or vice versa. I've typed the wrong version number because who knows what the hell version of Fedora we're releasing. I, I, I'm not very good at this. Like I cannot copy paste well. So anyway, if that happens, we give it a week. <laughs> so after a week, the community, you know, offers their feedback. You, it's always constructive. They always have these great ideas that add on to it. It's never just empty complaining. And then I copy and paste more stuff into a Fesco ticket. And then Fesco, generally within a week, sometimes really faster than that. But they go through and they, you know, approve it or reject it. Sometimes they'll go back and say, can you add more to this page? We're not really sure what we're voting on. Or like, hey, this would be great, but like, there, here's a concern, address it, or you're getting can. So let's assume Fesco accepts the change. I hand out a shiny new badge. The, the change owner does the work to implement it. And people never do the implementation and then go back and like, oh, I should probably submit a change proposal for that. No, that never happens. Um, and then we evaluate contingency plans where they're where applicable at the beta freeze, usually. Um, sometimes changes are actually like the contingency plan doesn't really need to be invoked until final freeze because it's something kind of small or maybe it's sooner because it involved a mass rebuild. But like for most part it's at beta freeze or some random date that sometimes people just put in. And so we have a timeline basically working back from the beta freeze, you know, code complete 100% code complete testable. We start a mass rebuild. We have a deadline for submitting so it actually can go through the process. So that's your reminder of how the process works. So why are we changing anything? I'm selfish. I'm lazy. <laughs> and I make a lot of mistakes. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the selfish part's self-deprecating. But in all honesty, a lot of it is like, this is just a giant pain in the butt for me. And like all this copying and pasting is not a valuable use of my time that I could be doing other things for the community. And yeah, that's kind of ties into being lazy. Um, you know, I, I'm a former sysadmin, so I'm always trying to automate myself out of a job. And yeah, I mean, I wanted well, that one in 20 chance that something is wrong when I sent the email or I put the wrong link to the devel list thread in the Fesco ticket or I did something like it's just annoying. Um, the other thing I didn't put on there is the, the dark magic of how we actually generate the Bugzilla issues once the change is accepted. There's a, a Perl script that parses the text of the wiki page and hopes it does the right thing of pulling out the summary and the title and the change owner and shoving that into, um, uh, into the Bugzilla. And mostly it works. Right? <laughs> Mostly it works because Perl is really good at parsing text and stuff, but sometimes people just do something just unexpected enough that I have to go in and like manually edit the page before I can run the script. And then I find out the email address they had for themselves on the wiki page isn't their Bugzilla email address. And Bugzilla is like, I'm not going to create this bug. I don't know who this is. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> so as I'm doing this, you know, I, my idea was like, I want to make these changes to make my life better. I don't want to make everyone else's life worse. One, because I, I have no ability to force anyone to do anything. Like if we were all Red Hat employees working on a Red Hat product, I could call people's managers and be like, hey, they're not being a team player. Can you do something? They'd be like, no. But at least I'd have that option. In a, you know, in my view, everyone working on Fedora is doing it in a volunteer capacity. That's the way I think of it because that's, a, that's the same default. And it's true to some degree for a lot of people. So it's really 
you know, I have to try and make it something that people can accept. Um, somebody else said changing people's workflow is unpopular. Um, and so this is how I'm going to burn all the political capital I've developed in the last year doing this job by changing things for you. Uh, but yeah, so really, it's I want it to be something where you don't really notice if you're a change owner that much difference. And I really want to auto automate things because I'm going to have fewer missed takes. I um, can do things faster and spend more time doing other things in Fedora. And part of that is by separating out, separating out metadata. Like we don't, we shouldn't be parsing the wiki text to get people's email addresses. We can just say, here's the field where you enter your email address. Here's the field where you say, this is a self-contained change or this is a system-wide change. Uh, you can just do things and they're separate and you can treat them separately and operate on them separately. So with all of that said, what are we changing? Nothing, sort of. Like the actual, from a, like the business part of the process isn't changing. The flow still happens basically the same way. It's just sort of an implementation detail about how this is going to work. It's changing some tooling. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going to have a sandwich about the changes process now, too? What? Well, huh? Sandwiches where you say a nice thing and a bad thing and then a nice thing afterwards. <laughs> I, I, have, I have nothing but nice things to say from here on out. Um, so, yeah, so it's basically the same process, but just a new tool. We're using the Taiga instance at teams.fedoraproject.org. If you were in Matthew's talk this morning, he mentioned that. So, so what does it look like? Well, you just create an issue, and you have some fields that are just custom fields that kind of get some of the stuff we want. But then, like a lot of the body of like the actual content of what you're proposing to change is still just there, except now you can use Markdown, which is a lot easier. <laughs> It's so much easier, and if you keep going, if you're switching back from Markdown to MediaWiki to back to Markdown, you never get the formatting right. Um, you can also do it in HTML if you really want to, but I don't know why you would. Maybe you can mass import all the old ones that way. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah. So like, and again, like if there's, you know. If you have, some people have like a list of, like, they use the wiki macros to, like, get package status and stuff. You could still point out to a wiki page as, like, further details, but you can still have the content there. Or you can use a handy new CLI tool and just do it all from the command line. So, yeah, so it better work. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's, so the idea is, like, a lot of the work you're doing is happening in the command line, you know, at a terminal anyway. You know, you're making like com commits to your spec file and pushing that. So like, what if you just, add, then you went doo -doo -doo, and then you had an editor come up that you entered your text in and then you could possibly create a release engineering ticket if needed and like all that magic just happened and you never even had to open your web browser. That'd be kind of cool, right? Uh, so if you want to see more about the, uh, the tool um, coming to the summer sh coding showcase Saturday morning. And also, we'll have about what ten minutes to to talk about it. So, it'll be a pretty quick overview. Um, I had really hoped we'd be at a point where I could like we'd have like a final version and some documentation. I could show you stuff. And the reason where you're not at that point is me. Um, so, I, I, I'll take the heat off of you for that. Like that's that's entirely on me not having enough time in the day. So yeah, so you're submitting your proposals as Taiga issues, then, but then processing happens in an automated fashion. I type a command and give it the issue number and it does the thing. It sends the email and it sets the reply to so that it doesn't keep going to devel announce also so we don't have to keep going back and rejecting people's replies to devel announce because that's not <laughs> useful use of that list. So hey, that's an improvement right there already. Then it create, you know, when I type the next command, it creates the uh, the Fesco issue, when it's accepted, it converts it to a user story and we create the release notes issue and create the bugzilla and I don't have to copy and paste stuff, which means the thing that you will look at is actually correct. And we'll, st um, we'll still produce HTML change set summaries, kind of like we have on the wiki page, um, except why deal with the wiki when we could just write an HTML file and put it on the web. Yes, because there was, so 
There was, there was enough feedback that people like to use Bugzilla, like the change per tracker bugs, to tie in um, other bugs, like to be related or you know blockers and stuff. That's why I proposed using Bugzilla for that in the first place long ago. So, I mean, yeah. That's to see people now tie us to that. Like, yeah. Ball yeah. So if, if like somebody's, for example, retiring Python two, they might link a lot of bugs against the uh, you know get rid of Python two change proposal. <laughs> so what if it's terrible? I mean, Taiga has some issues. It's not a perfect tool. Um, people already know the wiki. They kind of like it. Some people just ref even refuse. I, I actually got that feedback. Like They're like, no, the wiki works, and I'm going to keep doing it. Hey, there's hundreds of us. We all have our preferences. It's fine. But here's the thing. If it's terrible, we can go back. The wiki still exists. We can find another way to do it. Like we can do stuff, and I will do the copy pasting for you, in the hopes that I can do it correctly. And if it's wrong, well, there's only so much I can do about that. Um, but again, like you know, I really this. I'm treating this as sort of an experimental thing. Like we're going to try it for a while, and we'll we'll improve upon it. And if it's just unacceptably bad forever, it's not. It's not the change owner's fault that. It sucked, so we'll go. You know, I will take the time to to clean things up for them because I'm nice. No matter what Matthew says about me. All right. So what's next? Like I said, I really hoped we'd have the CLI tool done. Um, I just kept not testing it and not giving Manas feedback, and so that makes it really hard for him to you know fix things and get the polish done. Um, so then we'll, like, we'll finish, write up some documentation. He's actually written a lot of good documentation of the usage of the command line tool itself. But we need to document like the change to how you actually submit it. And gosh, there's a whole bunch of wiki pages that I keep meaning to put into docs.fedoraproject.org. And I just never get to it because, man, that's like, you got to block out time. I just need to like, sit down like, this is my afternoon where I shut everything except the wiki content and the Git repo. Um, but we already have some accepted Fedora 32 proposals, including this one. Like we actually ran this through the changes process, which made me a little nervous. But then I was able to bribe Fesco into accepting it, so that was great. Um, you shouldn't quite say that on the recording. <laughs> <laughs> I was able to use my powers of persuasion and beg Fesco for lenience. That is much better. <laughs> <laughs> much better. Um, and so, you know, as we do it, like for, for Fedora, Fedora 32, you know, in the next few weeks, this will be ready. To, so m most of the change proposals will be submitted through this. And we're going we're gonna to find things that are bad about it. So we'll fix those if we can. Um, but then mostly it'll be done, and I'll find something else to improve. Um, I already have some thoughts about the release readiness meeting, and I will be happy to share them later. Um, but it'll be a much, that's like a real improvement that everyone can get behind, I hope. Uh, and so with that, I am about at time. I don't want to keep people from dinner, so uh, I will stick around for questions, but don't feel obligated to, to sit here and wait if you'd rather go be doing anything else.
Now, for me, it seems really weird that we use uh, Tagore issues instead of Tagore commits to legal anthropology. And I feel like uh, this literary use in this thing, we, we are going to get this try to resolve the problem that is already solved and will replace the familiar work scope for centuries. Uh, Pulisat is a definitely a sustained standard discourse. He will use all this custom process So to, to sum it up, the, the concern raised is that we have a lot of things that look very similar to this and we're solving them with sort of custom solutions instead of just using uh, pull requests in Git. Um, I would argue that anything that involves processing text is not a good fit for uh, a, pull, a pull request be, because you can't separate the metadata from the data as easily. Um, I, I want to go ahead and just pause on the general discussion and make sure there, you know, take any other questions about this specifically. Matthew? Yeah, uh, my question actually might partly answer this concern as well. Um, you said they get converted to user stories in Taiga. Is, are the, the user stories then moved through columns in a workflow in kind of way? Yes, I, I, did, I didn't mention that. So the, the question was, will, will the user stories move through? And that yes, that is one of the things. So right now, the, the source of truth is the Bugzilla issue. So if you set it to modified, you set it to on QA, et cetera. Uh, so one of the things that will happen is you, there's a script that basically checks the Bugzilla status and puts the card in the right category. So you do get that dashboard view. Um, and then so each, each release is an uh, epic in Taiga, so you can just look at like the Fedora 32 changes, or you can look at all of them and see where you know easily see what state they're in, as opposed to like looking th right now. It's the, the wiki page; you have to look through each entry and be like, all right, which one's that? Okay, yeah, okay. Um, so yes, you do get the, the sort of dashboard view. Yeah, so that's one of, and so I had originally um, come up with this idea using um, Pagger as the source of truth. I you know, started talking to people about this last fall, uh, and then Taiga became available. I was like, oh, that's actually for like the dashboard kind of view stuff. That's actually a much better fit for this kind of workflow. I, I'm not sure I understand the concern. Versus a PR, the workflow would be able to submit a change to it and then have a discussion. 
Oh, so it would all be in one place? Is, is, that, is that the, like, so PR would be, you could discuss, you'd, the conversation would happen in the pull request as opposed to like on mailing lists and things like that? Right. Yeah. So in a lot of ways, this is very similar to how the wiki yeah, work yeah. base workflow works. Well, um, yeah. It's like, and that's, you know, a lot of things, like there are things we could probably do better, but on the other hand, like it's also a way to like make it a little more incremental. Um, so like right now, once I edit a wiki page, I get email notifications if someone changes it. We could do the same with, you know, tracking the, the status. Um, and the nice thing about, um, Taiga versus say Pagger is, um, you know, for like issues and stuff, you can actually see that the edits were made and see what they were. So like it's a little, a little better version control. Um, for the more general case you're talking about, I'd love to have a good solution for that because I think there are a lot of things where we would benefit from a more generalizable solution, but I don't know what that looks like in a way. Not yet. Um, there'll be templates for it. So, I mean, there's a little bit of filling out a template. It'd be kind of nice if more of that could be moved to custom fields, I guess. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's certainly possible. It's just sort of a, at some point, it's not worth separating, like, a lot of a lot of these things when it's basically just, and 
honestly, now that we have metadata pulled out, like I care a lot less about the actual content in there because like explain it is basically what it boils down to because all the things we need to process it are out separately. That would be the case too if it were just a, a text file that was you have to have, yeah, you have to have an adjunct metadata file of some kind. Yeah. In the review process you mentioned the case so again if it's uh, using some data for review or suggestion of doing something then basically it moves it from the result. So the uh, this workflow could be a case of so it could be the old back to <laughs> I'm just happy about the thought of not writing any more wiki text. Below this, there are going to be comments that will be after every given discussion. Is it going to be? Like yeah, but you know, you know, like comments like, please, in the first sentence, let's change, let's change the first sentence to something else. Remember the motto, tepid change for the somewhat better. No, that's, <laughs> that's how we do this. No, that's how we do this. Everyone else wants to pass a break. But that doesn't work. <laughs> I'm just advocating for the future because I feel like people yeah. uh, don't use uh, this code class to the level that it's actually useful. And if you know, like GitHub, for example, they use this GitHub this code class for everything, including marketing and uh, legal work. And act actually, we should be afraid of asking people to work with it without making it useful and helpful for uh, the workflow for, for us. So then it would work. Which is, which is oh, we should change the policy here. Yeah, and that's actually, and, 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 and the council now has a policy for changing the policy, which is submit a pull request and then we vote on it. So, like, you know. Yes, that's the, the HTML output. That's basically going to be the same thing that we have on the wiki now, just generated. And then, like, I could have the um, scheduled directory SSHFS mounted, which I do anyway. And then I can just write a file out instead of having to, like, edit the section and copy and paste stuff in. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be, and like once we're producing the file, we can pr put it wherever. Like that's. Other questions. What do we do with the old stuff once we move to the new process? Because it'd be nice if all of that was archived and discoverable from the same place, wherever that is. 
Yeah, so it would be nice, like, so basically go back to Fedora 7 and just copy everything over. Yeah. Um, you know, if I get bored or something, but, like... I, I mean, you can just take, like, the HTML exports. Yeah, so... Uh, save those static files. Yeah, so what's, what's probably most likely is I'll just take the, the change set wiki page and pipe it to a parser that produces an, just a regular HTML file and stick that in the same location. Yeah. Um, so we'll, you know... And then maybe also the change pages themselves, just so that way there is um, some historical record that we don't lose, but not necessarily have to go through and reproduce the wheel. Well, and the reason I bring that up is the specific thing that is people use our changes and feature pages as actual references of how to do things. It shows up in the weirdest places now. I always use it as an example of the most important one. Right. <laughs> so that's <laughs> like. stuff half the time for some of the things that they're thinking about maybe possibly planning to do. <laughs> Codex is referencing not even proposed changes yet. Yeah. Right, yeah. At this point, I'm pretty sure Michael's like watching the, 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 oh, yeah. the change yeah. namespace and just reporting stuff. Or, and actually, I think having this dashboard like that will make it more clear like what, what state they're right. in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's one of the things I like about this idea is that people will be less confused about what a change means. But yeah, as you come across those things, if you like drop a link to me, I'd, I'd kind of like to see how other people reference our stuff because like that would be helpful in knowing how it, how the information is consumed outside of the community. Because that's like going back to what I was saying about communication. That's one of the you know main target audiences is people who aren't coming to Flock or contributing to Fedora. It's the, you know the tech press, the user community, other distros. Yeah. Um, the the one that I'd like to give as the greatest example. Of or feature slash change that everybody just refers to as authoritative is the user move page. Because that thing is everywhere. Every single distro that has actually done it references our page on the methodology on how to do it. From Debian, just when they did their user merge this year, the Fedora, yes, <laughs> this year, our page from six years ago is the primary documentation for that. <laughs> <laughs> and Ubuntu, when they did it last year, same reason, same document. Um, OpenSUSE is going through finishing user merge because I'm finally poking them with enough sticks. And again, the document shows up. It's in the page for their user merge wiki. They say, reference the Fedora document for more details about how this is supposed to work. And it just, it, it's literally everywhere. So like if you want a reference about like this is how far this spreads and we don't know it, that page is in so many places that if it disappeared, we'd be in trouble. Yeah. So you should also, when you come across these links, send them to Matthew so he can use them to talk to his management. Be like, hey, look at how much we're driving the rest of the ecosystem. Sure. Great. <laughs> and I know of a number of projects that have built their process based on ours. Uh, like, for example, the Mandriva family changed their whole development process to be just like ours after it worked out so well for us. So there was that. Um, the early OpenStack stuff for their scheduling and release identification was very similar to our process before they switched to the Garrity model. Um, Mainly but because Launchpad sucked. So Garrett Model 4, uh, they have design specs in the new, that, that's absolutely because the YAML file is design spec, and design spec is, is, a, is a change, and it has sections like impact, industry plan, dependencies, and so on, and they have approval process for this, and then it was being stored in the ordinary. So it's, it's being simple. Congratulations. <laughs> Would you mind sending that to me when you, if you yeah, remember? Yeah, because I'd, I'd just like to take a look. I like to see what other projects do because there aren't too many.
projects of our size that have like processes around stuff yeah. in this way, so it's always nice to compare notes. The only one that actually predates ours that I'm aware of is the Ubuntu Blueprints process, which I think was the original impetus behind the model that we eventually adopted. Uh, they, use, they don't do blueprints anymore, they don't do them, but in 2005 up until like 2010 or so, they would make these things that look kind of like our in their wiki that they call blueprints or specs describe what they're changing, the impact, what's required, and things like that. And they don't do those anymore, but I, it seems like that those were, that was the, the genesis of the way that we do these things. Mira, I'll let you give the, the last one, and then I'm going to get out of the AB cruise way. Possibly unrelated, possibly related thing. We have users that are confused by something that's written on very old feature pages, <laughs> uh, assuming it's a current state of I don't are you making sure that, that the documents that are generated actually from the first site are not confused with the current documentation? Uh, it might actually make that work. It will be easier to find. They will be easier to find. I Hopefully they'll be a little more clear about, like, because it'll be like, you know, closed, implement it, but I guess that'll be like, oh, it's the current state. Um, I don't know that it'll, I don't think it'll help. I hope it won't make it worse. Um, I think doing a better job of keeping our documentation up to date and in a, a single sane place. So, you know, the less documentation we have in the wiki, I think the easier it will be for people using search engines to find the correct documentation because it'll just point to, you know, docs.fedoraproject.org instead of a wiki page that somebody wrote and never actually implemented seven years ago. But. Yeah, we, they, yeah, that, that makes sense. All right, well, uh, it's now 47 minutes after I started for a 25-minute talk. Um, oops. Thank you, everyone, for coming.